what's going on everybody hey hey what's going on everybody is that a real song made a video in a long time y'all probably don't like me but i'm back <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to my channel if you're not new and if you're new here welcome um my name is vicky this is my husband cam she does this every time she reaches over and know. touches me I have to touch him. But yes, today we are filming um, our annual marriage Q&A, okay? Uh, we do this every year. Seventh time doing this. Um, so if you haven't watched any of the other six, we got six years of videos um, on my main channel, on Life with the Logans. We got some on his channel. And we also now have a podcast if you guys didn't know, you probably didn't because I haven't been on this channel. Um, but if you didn't know, we did launch a podcast this year called Everything Is We. We've been working on it for like a couple months now. And yeah. Um, technically, yeah, we've been working on it for a couple months now. And we are so excited about it. We love doing it. It is so much fun because we get to talk about our relationship and just everything we've learned in the past 10 years that we've been together. If you guys want to check that out, I'm just going to tell you, you should check it out, actually. You should. It's, um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> and we... NGL, not going to lie. We are very excited about that. That is our baby, our new project right now that we're working on. So we are so excited about it. Um, so you guys should definitely check that out. If you wanted to keep up with us, that's where to keep up with us on the, on the podcast and on our vlog channel. Today, we are going to be doing our annual marriage q and I asked you guys to ask me some questions. Well, ask us we us because everything's we uh us some questions um about year seven which was 2020 the treacherous year of the century <laughs> but i think it was actually not a terrible year for us personally no. so um we're just gonna talk about 2020 and how we made it through jesus because whew. at the end we'll probably talk about this year and what we have going on so we kind of already did this in a preview ish version in a video that was probably the last video that i uploaded on this channel actually we kind of touched on like mental health and things that we were working on throughout the year as far as like um helping each other get through tough times and things like that we're gonna kind of go through that again we're just gonna do it all again because i don't remember what we said in that video so um we should just go through the whole shebang so if it sounds like we said this already we probably did but it's fine so first question is um, describe year seven in one word. You first. No, don't go me first. I just gave the whole intro. Okay. Year seven in one word. One word. 2020. 2020. That's my word. I usually have like a list of years and then like what I call each like one. Like the first word that came to my head was unique. Well, it was unique. But the word that I said in the beginning of the year was restoration. Restoration hardware. I was just about to say that. <laughs> Restoration hardware. Restoration hardware. At the beginning of the year, I said God was going to restore things in 2020. It seems like things kind of fell apart for them to be restored. But maybe if you look at it, because I think you can make a sermon out of anything. You can oh, preach, absolutely. You I, can preach from anything. I can preach right now from that. Go ahead. Preach. Well, God did restore a lot of things because people had to truly take a deep dive and and truly evaluate what they value that's very true so our value system had to be restored that's a, that's true it's like man people weren't able to see their families people weren't able to uh go to the places that they love people weren't able to gather mm -hmm. uh together so mm -hmm. the things that you truly valued uh that that joy that passion that love had to be restored it's like man now here we are i was just mentioning to a couple people that I haven't seen my coworkers. I haven't seen my boss. I haven't been to my job physically in a year. And yeah, so that's true. if those are things that you enjoy and you value, you're like, man, like now we're sitting here a year into the pandemic and people's joy for the gathering together of family and friends has been restored. The joy of cherishing uh, uh, loved ones and the elderly and your grandma and your grandpa and your grandparents your, and and the, your older aunties and uncles and and relatives and things of that sort like the joy the love has been re restored uh the the restoration of of 
the true church, you know, not these traditions that men have built up. And I can I can go on, but that's not what this video is about. So. Yeah. So for me, the year it was a year of restoration. That was the word that I said, and I saw that happening a lot. Actually, I saw it with a lot of people, like my friends and family. A lot of things were being restored, um, as far as like relationships and like just people's, like you said, their value, the value things they value. Um, People, a lot of people were working on their mental health, which they probably hadn't done in years. Um, working on like themselves, like really dealing with what's going on in your house because you had to be there all day. You know what I'm saying? So in that regard, yes, things were being restored. I'd like to say I'm a prophet. But yes, year of restoration. And it was also the year of 2020 vision. We got some 2020 vision, but everything you see in ain't really what you thought you was going to see. Right. It don't look the way you thought it was going to look. You're seeing things for how they really are exactly are we really okay like are things really good like am i i had to do that i know i did i had to do a lot of self-evaluation like okay what am i really what is my life really mean like what am i really doing with myself like am i okay do you but okay so we answered this question last year in the q a but a lot of people asked it again, so I'm guessing either you didn't watch or you didn't pay attention. People, but they don't. They really don't. Be maybe they didn't make it to the end because we talked about it at the end. But um, they watched the first thirty because seconds. And they'd this be like, was Ooh, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because this was year seven. This was our seventh year, which I don't really care what people say about the seven year itch. I don't. I don't believe in that. But it is what it is. I believe seven is the year of completion, so that's what I think it is. But was I supposed a to start lot of people. This year? A lot of people. I don't know. A lot of people say that there's like a seven year itch in your marriage. So like the seventh year is the hardest year. That's the year where you go through the most stuff. Who are these a lot that's of people? The year. I don't know. That's, that's just what, what people wanna. say. This is what they say. I've, I've literally this is never what they say. ever heard that. I've seen people talk about it, but I've never, I didn't, I didn't ever. expect anything bad to happen on my seventh year. But let me just say this. It doesn't really count because 2020 is an anomaly in itself. So you can't really, I can't say well, year seven was the hardest because it was hard for everybody. That had nothing to do with our marriage. It had everything to do with the pandemic. And <laughs> like- The year was hard, but the, our marriage wasn't. Come on, somebody. Oh. I feel like year seven was probably the most eye-opening. And I, I want to say, and I don't, I don't like giving a superlative to a year because- Come like, on, words. I feel like, you see me with the SATs? Words of the day. Um, I don't like saying one year is better than the other, even though there are years I feel like that were harder than others. Um, but if I had to pick a favorite year, I think year seven was actually my favorite year. Just in, as far as our marriage goes, not thinking about everything else that happened outside of that. But just like who we are and who we've become, I like us the most in year seven. Yeah, it was, yeah, no, this year was dope. Marriage year seven was dope. I, I, I will concur. We were on a very good page. And I don't know if it was the Cam turning 30 thing, but like as soon as he turned 30, I was like, who are you? And can I get to know you? Give me your number. <laughs> can we talk for a minute? Can we talk? Because I mean, it's like, I don't even know what oh, happened. a minute. But like, it's like 30 Cam hits different. Clearly I'm a nice guy, but <laughs> 30 hit me differently in a spiritual sense and like a physical sense like my body start changing like spiritually i'm at a totally different place in my life my perspective mm -hmm. of life was different and uh, i had talked to my dad about it and obviously you, you know we know those of us that are believers if you're not no offense um still love you too but those of us that are believers in jesus christ we know that jesus began his public ministry at the age of 30 and i just felt like 30 was going to be a big shift for me and it, it and it really was it literally was like literally not just emotionally like like spiritually like i'm i'm the strongest i've ever been spiritually um emotionally mentally and you had to step up in a lot of ways too because of the pandemic yeah i mean yeah the pandemic but the pandemic what it allowed me to do is it allowed me to be more creative it allowed mm -hmm. me to do things that i always wanted to do but i felt like I was being held back by the majority of my time being consumed by my job. Yeah. And so, you know, now I'm home so I can, I can you know, I can do multiple things and, and knock stuff out and work on projects and be creative and, you yeah. know, all the, all the things. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I decided I was going to do is to just do all the things that I'm good at 
and you know god bless the works of my hands <laughs> so somebody asked what our favorite year was they said were the, were the first four years the hardest and what has been your favorite year so far those are like four, a lot of these questions i compiled together because a lot of them were the same so i tried to get all of the words in so i mean in a sense they kind of were the hardest though because i mean the first four years were our developmental years anyway as a couple it's like you don't just wake up you don't just walk down the aisle and be like okay we're married and then everything is like okay now we're married that's it you know what i mean like there's a lot of like meshing that has to happen like your lives have to kind of like shift no, both I, of us I, absolutely so it took a while to do that number one that i mean not that we had like tension but it's just we were still learning each other yeah a lot of learning curves a lot of learning curves i was a whole fresh adult out here in what way do you believe your spouse grew in 2020 well cam grew we just talked about that uh, <laughs> um i've always wanted you to be more assertive because you're a very like you're a very like easygoing guy, you know, like you kind of just were like, well, I don't know if I should really do this or you know what I mean? Like you were kind of shy and timid about your gifts and talents and how much you could actually how much power you actually have. I feel like you stepped into that power. I won't say I was shy. It was just like not shy, just holding back. You were holding yourself back. Yeah. yeah. I do it, too. It's fine. I mean, we both do. We've had this discussion, but. But no, I, this is one of the things I was actually going to talk about when we record tonight for the podcast is how you grew. You grew in the understanding of how your business flows um, spiritually. I mean, just like literally night and day. Our connection, like we always had a connection, but like 2020, it was just like we were both more present with each other we had to be because we were in the house all day for the that's true time. couldn't really go nowhere it's like that's another thing because we were both in the house like it's like okay now i'm i'm in your space the, yes and how you like try to get stuff done try to record and you did a great job of not like you need to leave the house because i'm trying to it was just like oh like I, because you're here I, like i feel like i need to like be all over you and it was just like you know we we got through that i know a lot of couples they clashed but there's a lot a lot we, most of the questions for this q a was how did y'all deal with being on top of each other all the time like did y'all invade each other's space was there like any tension like how did that work they want to know how the transition was for you working from home and to be quite honest i like cam it's great for me so i don't mind him being in my space there was like a there was a little bit of a friction at the beginning of the pandemic just, Maybe like just at the like at the very beginning the very the mere beginning and that's only because i think we were both just well i was frustrated with what was going on in general i don't show when i'm like stressed about something or like worried about something i wasn't worried per se but it was just weird so it's like what are we like what is life right now like i was so confused and i was still trying to like work through that and like try to be creative and it wasn't happening for me so i felt like because you were home maybe you were throwing me off so there were a couple of times i was like okay i need you to leave so i can figure out what i'm about to do but then when you left i didn't do anything either so then i was just like well it's not him so never mind <laughs> i thought it was you but it wasn't it's just like it was just the whole idea of the pandemic in general was throwing me off like my whole work vibe because then when i would leave you'd be like when are you coming home yeah i was i would be like no wait come back so she it, does that. You do that now. I do. Like literally, be here all day. I miss you. And then the moment I'm about to leave, oh my God, where are you going? Like, bro, I what? promise y'all I'm not clingy. I like my alone time. I don't even have to be. It's not that I want to be on top of you all day. You don't, because like I could be downstairs sitting down. I just and like you, you won't being even in the come house. Down there. I just like you being in the house. <laughs> then the moment you hit the garage door, it gets lonely. Wait, where are you going? <laughs> because you don't have to. I know you're not going to work, so I'll be like, dang, where are you going? Wait. If you had to go to work, I'd be like, whatever, but. Wait. And then sometimes I want you to leave. Like sometimes I want you to go hang with your Wait, friends. And where stuff. are you going? I like when you hang with your friends. Y'all do things. Y'all get things done. I like it. I like to see it. Now, if you want to play basketball, I'm looking at you sideways. I like when Cam leaves the house to do things that I want him to do. I like I want him to do the things that I know are going to be fruitful and that are going to escalate him and take him to the next level. Something that made you love each other more in 2020. The pandemic. The pandemic. <laughs> everything that happened 2020 it's like when all the chaos in the world is going on 
I just be looking at you like, wow, I have a like really great husband. Hey guys, look at Vicky with the slick backs. Oh my God, I can't wait to get some slick backs. Oh my God, I need some braids so bad. I'm so tired of this straight hair, honestly, truly. But yeah, seriously though, when we go through things, I'm like number one, I have a really, I call it a superpower. I have a superpower where I'm able to remain extremely calm in a crisis. Um, and I believe Cam has the same thing. And so the fact that we well, don't- I remain really calm in any situation. Well, Cam is calm in any situation. It's like when everything is going bad in the world, like we be chilling. We're so chill. We have a lot of peace with each other. So I feel like the fact that we're so peaceful makes it easier for us to thrive in, in crises. Yeah, I just be like, wow, I just love you because you're not stressing me out. Big facts. You know? You want something to drink? I'm gonna run and get, get something to drink because I'm, I'm thirsty. Same. Keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going? You're not gonna be here. Why do you always get up and leave during these videos? Keep it going, keep it going. Does he, does he always do this, y'all? No, I'm not. I'm gonna find a video clip of the last time you did this and left me talking. I'm not making it up. I have proof. I have receipts. I'm about to get something to drink. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, I just, I learned. I learned, you gotta put your finger up. <laughs> Next question, how did the pandemic strengthen your marriage and your relationship with God? During the pandemic, um, I, like I said, I found myself frustrated um, with where I was and who I was as an individual. Not with our marriage, but with me and as an individual, I felt like um, I wasn't where I wanted to be, physically and mentally, not my body, but like, physically in this house, in this space, you get locked up in a house that you don't like, that you're ready to move out of and see if you don't get frustrated. Like, that was me all year. Really frustrated with like, wow, I really wanna move. Like, I don't wanna be here. I don't like the way this looks. I don't like the way this looks. I'm. It, we feel cluttered, we feel crammed. There's too much stuff in this house. We need to get rid of so many things. We need to fix stuff. Like, I got so irritated with everything. And then on top of that, I was like, I had taken a lot of time off of YouTube because I felt like, that felt cluttered to me, that felt old and needed revamping and I just, I didn't want to do that. And I felt so bad about myself because I didn't feel creative enough to do the things that I needed to do. And I kind of like started beating myself up again. Like it was really bad. There was a couple months where I just really was like going really hard on myself. Um, and then you turn 30. Around the time you turned 30 was when I had like a, a mind shift. And that's when I like had like a, vulnerable moment with you and I was just like these are all the things that are really bothering me we had to sit in the car and talk a couple times I feel like it was me coming into who I am now because this I know I was going through a transitional period the year before but I feel like I was coming to the end of that and I was like shedding some some scales some dead weight mm. um and so that really like pushed me to talk to you about it and then I feel like in talking to you it strengthened us to get because then it was like at that point we was like okay you turn 30, this is what's going on, like, this is how I'm feeling. I feel like we need to do this, 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 and this. So we made a whole list of things we wanted to do for the end of the year. You know, like, we really started to, like, okay, what do we need to do? We need to do X, Y, Z to get where we want to be. And I feel like that strengthened us because we started to communicate more about who we wanted to be and what we wanted to see in our marriage. Our marriage was strengthened, too, in beginning stages of looking for a home. There are certain things that we realized that we had to let go of and get rid of in order to make room for the new or for what's next. Not that you're un ungrateful. We need to expand. We need more space. We have clutter, um, things that we needed to get rid of. And it's amazing how you hoarding things that you don't need or things that you've had for so long can like weigh you down just because of like the emotional weight that things carry like keeping things from from seasons where you like have grown out of that but keeping those things keeps you in that mind frame if that makes sense seeing stuff that i've had for so long where i went through something and i had that and i look at it and i can think about the things that happened when i had that it's like so many of my like most trying emotional moments have been in this house so i feel like this whole space over here like when i had all my beauty stuff in here like it reminded me of all of that and i needed to let that go so yeah. that's why moving this room around like i almost started crying because i'm like this is like what i used to envision as my life this was my job it's like lose i, I felt like i quit my job 
when I did when I moved that stuff. Our relationship with God, because that was the other part of the question. Because mm -hmm. um, of the pandemic and me, like kind of partially being on staff at my church, just the landscape of church changing. Mm -hmm. The pandemic literally had to happen for people to realize, like, man, I really don't have a relationship with God. I have a relationship with, with church. church. Yep. And so in that. You know, I decided that I was going to start reading more and start studying my word more and and spending more time with God because it was like, I don't want to I don't want to be one of those people that have a relationship with church and I don't have a relationship with God. Yeah. And when you don't when you can't rest on the fact that somebody else can sing praise and worship for you. Yep. And you can stand there and be like, oh, I like this song. I don't like this song. Um, you know, you're not really all in. So I was like, I want to be all in in the things that I know I need to be all in with. You know, God placed people in my life to help me along that ministerial road and strengthen my relationship with God. And, and you know, I met great people and, and decided to take a deeper dive. And I invested in things to help me with my relationship with God. Investing in Bible courses, Bible classes, Bible literacy uh, to make sure that when I minister the word, I'm not speaking from an ignorant place right. and, and twisting the word to make it seem or make it be something that it's not. You know, like the Bible says in Ezekiel, the blood is going to be on my hands. And then even at the beginning of the year, my wife and I, you know, taking on the Bible challenge, I've been failing miserably, miserably at Same. that. Same. Um, but but it's fine. It's, you know, we'll get grace. Uh, grace. <laughs> last year was a turning for turning point for me in my relationship with God as well because I realized how much I wasn't trusting God um, and how how being busy was keeping me from fully trusting God with everything like there were certain things that I wasn't allowing God in that space i.e. like my job and like things that I do for work and things like that like I feel like I had a lot of control over that but then at pan the pandemic made me realize you don't have control over you're, half you're not you yeah do. Um, and so like not being able to control yet another aspect of my life, um, I was frustrated. And so then it made me realize, wow, I actually don't like I have I have trust God sometimes. I'd be like, Lord, you I trust you with like these three things, but then like these other three things, like these are my things that I do, that I that I care about. You don't really care about this yeah. stuff. You know, I got this. This is fine. You ain't thinking about that. But like God's in everything. And I think twenty twenty showed me like God really is in everything. Yep everything even the pandemic he's in the pandemic before i was like oh i'm being still no i wasn't i wasn't being still i was like fake being still <laughs> like oh i'm sleeping and resting so that's me being still no you that's in, not being you, still it, it was like it was like what the uh what is the saying goes it's like you tell your dog to sit but like everything in them is saying don't sit yes or but they're only sitting because they think they're gonna get something so yeah they just sit. Like, i actually had to get to a point where like okay i actually am at peace with where i'm at i actually am good with who i am my life everything so i sat i'm telling y'all i sat in the corner i sat in the corner all year <laughs> and literally just sat in the quiet camera would go play golf and i'd be sitting in the silence listening to the walls the trees blow like really like sitting and being still and and allowing a lot of those feelings that i had about not having control over things to die what traits positive and negative were highlighted more because of the pandemic i mean we both have negative traits that we both are actively working on uh yes i think one of the those traits was the fact that we do keep stuff past its uh, expiration date we're not no. organized we both kind of fell off in you know how we take care of the house yeah <laughs> we don't do that yeah so we um got, we got to get back to that we, we fell off pretty miserably because i have these question cards that i've talked about before um and one of the questions was what's something that you'd like to work on in our relationship or whatever and being more organized and more you know clean and keeping the house in a less un a non-cluttered space you know was one of the things we were going to work on. How did the tragedies of 2020 and the socioeconomic and political issues, the election, Black Lives Matter, etc., affect your marriage or individually? Uh, 2020 was, I mean, it was a challenge in relation to the pandemic because in December of 2019, I lost my grandmother, who I was very close to. It's going to sound crazy to some, but like, I'm glad that she, what, she no, didn't live through this. We're very glad she, because not, she wasn't here for that. Because we wouldn't have been able to see her. 
It would have been horrible. She may have, she may have died with no one by her, near her, been able to visit her. My mom lost her dad, my grandfather. Last year. Last yeah. year. So I lost two grandparents um, within a year. And, you know, that's tough. That's tough because, you know, my mom lost both of her parents. Yeah. So, like, me trying to be strong for my mom and make sure she's good and and knowing how my mom is extremely giving of herself to do whatever she possibly can for her family, you know, that's that's tough. And so that's a challenging thing. And then all the stuff that we were constantly seeing in the news and in the media, people of color were literally dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder Yeah, from seeing it's, uh, it people was, like them murdered on national television, national TV, social Live. media. You get on Instagram, you see it's sensitive content. You get on Twitter, uh, there's no there's no censoring, there's no censorship. So you just you just see it. You just see it. Um, yeah. And you're constantly seeing these videos, people retweeting, uh, things are being regurgitated, and new other media outlets are continuing to post these videos and these clips. People are voicing their opinion and their outrage and so much stuff like be shifted and changed. And then uh, the presidential election, the political debauchery. I'm shocked, but I'm not shocked. Um, and I'm just continuing to press for the mark because, you know, I know my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness. Honestly, truly. Um, I think if anything, it just made us more love each other more. I mean, everything makes us love each other more. Everything makes us connect more because we're like, wow, we really see things the same way. Not that it didn't bother me, because of course it did. I deleted my whole Twitter app for like five months and didn't get on. And I still don't even get on Twitter as much anymore. I literally took so much time off of social media last year, more than I ever have, because I was like, I can't continue to see this. I'm not gonna continue to be traumatized by this information. We just continued to lean on each other. We still laughed and had fun and enjoyed life regardless. Yep. It was tough, but going back to what you said, because somebody asked, 2020 brought a lot of death and grief. How do you comfort each other in grief? Are your grieving styles different? How did Vicky help Cam cope with the loss of his grandmother? So in 2020, the beginning of 2020, we did a marriage Q and A and we did touch on his um, his grandmother passing and um, how we got through that. And that was me. That was my first time ever seeing Cam really like cry and I've cried in church and stuff but yeah like, that, but I've never I'm, seen like a grief cry yes I've never seen you grieve before um and the thing about Cam is well the thing about both of us is we aren't like heavy grievers like that we grieve I feel like in positive ways like we always see the positive in things the whole year grandma was like not well she wasn't herself so that whole year I was kind of like trying to comfort you and make sure I was there for you because I could tell you were uncomfortable. Like the day she passed, he was sad, obviously. He's gonna be sad. Um, but then after that, he was just like- The day she passed at the funeral. Yeah, the day she passed and the funeral, yes. That day you were you were emotional too. But other than that, Cam's not really like super, like a feely person like that. So I just tried to be there the best way I knew how, which is just like being there. If you need to talk, I'm gonna listen, you know? But I'm not the kind of person to be like, all over you like are you okay are you good do you need like i don't i don't i don't really do that if i'm grieving no, i don't want I, nobody don't, to bother me like, i don't like that anyway i don't yeah i don't like you to keep bringing it up like i'm <clears throat> this sounds harsh and it sounds bad but i life goes on when people die like people die and then life goes on like i don't know what else to do with that like you know what i mean so like if somebody when people because people have died in my family too and i've been extremely sad about it and i'd be crying and like especially because i wasn't there a couple times somebody died and i was like wow i'm not there i was sad for like a few hours and then it's like all right what you want to eat like life goes on like i don't i don't know what else to do i have a very practical view of death i feel like people die it's sad but you have to move forward there was a moment where like it was really tough like and it this wasn't even about your grandma this was about one of the youth that passed and cam, that had, was, to, cam had to do the that was incredibly the, hard the eulogy it was his first time doing a funeral um that was during the pandemic we had to it was during the pandemic. It was capacity yeah one of our youth because cam's the youth pastor one of our youth got killed shot and killed and that was extremely hard it was a very hard day that was the second time that i've really seen cam cry <laughs> to me that was heavier than not to dis not to dis dishonor grandma or anything like that grandma's grief was 
it was still grief. It was but grief. But it was like she's no longer in pain. She's no yes. longer suffering. Yes. We love you. We miss you. But grandma, you are in a better place. Yes. When a young man is shot and killed. Yeah. He hasn't and, even lived his full life. In, yeah, a teenager. And your life is literally taken from you due to senseless, senseless violence. Senseless foolishness. Just dumb. On top of that, it was my first funeral that mm -hmm. I had to do. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, that's tough. God help me to say the right thing right. to try to comfort these people. We don't have kids, so we see our youth as our kids. Like, we, we are somewhat responsible for them because we speak life into them. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like, dang, like that's one of our youth. But then you also have to do the whole funeral too and like be encouraging to people who are really like going through a hard time. Like that's, I guess to answer that question, our, our grieving styles are kind of the same. So we comfort each other the same way. How did you stay sane individually and together during the pandemic? I played a lot of golf. A lot of golf. And I went with him a lot of the time too. I was going with him at some times. Vicky has a habit of being like the people that she grew up with and that means she will stay in the house and We're not hermits. do nothing we and are all hermits. just be in the house and then be like oh we need to go somewhere like bro go outside <laughs> take a walk <laughs> smell the roses you know what i'm saying so i'll be like all right you're gonna come with me to the golf course you'll drive i really enjoyed it though Enjoy like but... golf is not just a game for me it's literally an escape especially with what i do being in ministry the heavy stuff that i deal with and, yeah. and being a man, I can get away. Especially if you want to be good at golf, you got to focus on the game. You have to be present. You can't be playing golf and thinking about anything else but golf if you want to be good. And I want to be good at everything. So you may see a deer off in the corner or you may see some eagles or hawks. Cam or, loves eagles. I, like I, I, <laughs> He's always talking about eagles. The nature. I mean, you may see some kind of creature that you've never seen before. And then if you travel and play golf, you may see gators in Florida and and different things of that sort of stuff that you're not used to seeing. And so, you know, I, I, I love I love golf because golf is one of the things that God has sent to me <laughs> to keep me sane. I love that for you. It makes me happy when he plays golf because he's he's so relaxed in that moment and he's truly like at peace. It makes me wait. happy. I can't wait to play golf. Couple, two weeks. Like going, two when we weeks. went to Cabo, and you played golf? I was just looking at the footage like, on the all the I was so camera. happy for you in that moment, like, because I had fun and I wasn't even playing. Even though I'm not an outdoorsy person, I actually really do love the outdoors. I just don't like being out there all the time, but I like to look at it. Like, I don't have to be doing anything. I just like to sit in it and just like soak in the sun, look at the trees and the clouds. Like, I feel like God speaks to me through nature. I enjoyed that golfing with him, golfing with him too. That kept me sane a lot of times because then it kept me, you know, active and getting out of the house smelling the trees and stuff was really helpful to my mental health because I was in the house so much last year. Um, I'm already a hermit, but also being in the house that much was literally driving me insane. So thank you for your golf game. Anytime, get ready, 2021 is going up. Is there a such thing as being around each other too much or is it possible to get bored of your spouse? There is, people need their space. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let me use the bathroom in peace. Yeah, okay. she likes to bust through doors. I and do. All that stuff. I like the door open when I'm I like, peeing. I like the door because she'll come in. I want to talk to and you. And want to talk peeing. to me and like no, it's healthy that each of you have your own things that you can do mm -hmm. separate from each other. Yeah. So when you do spend that time with each other, you're not annoyed with one another. People are just feel like they got to be around each other all the time, and that's why y'all argue and fight and cuss each other out because you need a break. Yeah. And you probably need a vacation you can't do the same things over and over and over and over again and expect to not get tired of that like You're it's like, okay bruh. to change things up i really like him i really love being around him i love spending time with him i don't get tired of him but i feel like one of the reasons why i don't get tired of him is because he doesn't suffocate me i don't suffocate him like if he's at home i'm not always on top of him all over him 24 7. like i'm going upstairs i'm gonna be doing my own thing 90% of the time like I like to be by myself um so while I do like him being in the house if he wants to hang out with his friends go hang out with your friends like for his birthday they were gone for a couple days playing golf in Oregon and 
I let him do his thing. I mean, I'm not gonna stop him from having fun if he wants to have fun, like with, without me. Like that's totally fine. And that was the greatest golf trip I've ever. And he was been on. so happy. It just made me happy to see how happy he was, and I'm glad that he could go on the trip. Do your own thing. Find some hobbies. Find something that you like to do without your spouse. Like that's okay too. It's okay to be an individual. But I don't get bored of Cam. Cam is never boring. We're not boring people. I'm actually don't buy even me. more fun like when the camera is off. Yes, he is a, a hoot. Have you all found new ways to express love to one another? Yes, but that's X-rated. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Go, yeah, a little adventurous. Did your intimacy increase or decrease during the quarantine? Turned to neighbors say increase, increase. Well, but I'll say this, I don't think it increased in frequency. I think it increased in Quality. Quality. Oh, come on. Quality, not quantity. Come on. Because I thought that because of the quarantine, we would actually be having sex more than we usually do, and we didn't. But when we did, though. Be clear. We we have a healthy schedule. No, yeah, we we do have a healthy. And not frequency. that we have sex on a schedule. No, we don't have sex on a schedule, but we have a healthy frequency. But I think I expected us to be doing it like more, but we weren't. But it's like the quality increased, I believe, because of our vulnerability with each other. Our emotional intimacy increased last year. Yeah. So that caused the physical intimacy to also... I, we talked about this in our podcast. Y'all should go watch the sex episode where we talked about sex. Are you too tired for sex or get bored with it? How do you avoid boring sex? I heard after more time, more effort is needed. Sometimes I am too tired, like like yesterday. I was at the... I went to the gym I know, I had to a good shower too, like... I was ready. I had a feeling that you were like really like wanting that and I really I really was sad for you. <laughs> <laughs> Deep down, like <laughs> when you when you came when you came out the shower, you came back in the room, I was like, man, like I smell like watermelon sugar. Man, you smell like watermelon candy. sugar. Uh... And I was just like, wow. Like I felt like by the time you got in the bed, like my eyes was like I was asleep. It's okay, I knew you was tired. It was out of there. I went to the gym twice that day and I went to hit golf balls so like my body my body still hurts right now i was tired because i was learning tiktok dances for like an hour and so. then you was doing that a few minutes ago before we recorded today too all i heard was thumps <laughs> <laughs> I, because no. i feel bad because these little kids know how to dance better than me and i used to really be good at dancing back in the day so i really am frustrated but yeah no sometimes we are tired and that's normal that's okay but i feel like people make that a bad thing they'd be like Oh, they're too tired. Like you feel offended because your spouse is tired. Like it, mm. it's the thing if they lying about being tired. If they're lying, or if they if one of the individuals has rejection issues, and yeah. that individual expressing that they're tired triggers you. With anything, the more I know you, the longer we're married, the longer we learn each other, the better things get. Our intimacy is better now than it was when totally we were younger and we first got married totally totally i have a video on my instagram it's called experience hits different and it's really talking about king david but it still matters and applies to anything in your life mm -hmm. the longer you experience something the, the more better. you grow with it the better you learn you'll be at expressing it that's with time you grow you learn things i mean it shouldn't get worse it should get better and that goes along with the second question how did you develop sexual compatibility 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 uh over the last seven years years we, of communication and learning each other's bodies. absolutely communication we we have those what people may consider uncomfortable conversations like, hey, babe, can I talk to you? Like, let's talk. Mm -hmm. I don't like when this happens or I do like when this happens. Me, Wanda and Taylor had a conversation about this because we were talking about like, these are the conversations married people have. After sex, do you talk about how it was? And I'm like, well, we don't like we don't like not right after, but like we do eventually. That's talk. so weird. No, but we do talk about it, though. Like the next morning, you may be like, babe, like last night. And then I'll be like, yeah, but let me tell you, though, like when you did this, though, or be like, well, like, I can tell you got tired and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we have discussions. Yeah, we like, do, but it ain't like, hmm. This now is what I observe. what happened. No, it's not like that. See, at five minutes and 55 seconds, <laughs> I can see that your energy level begin to drop. And I did not like that. It's not that in depth, but we do like, if I experience something that I like or don't like, then I express that. You have to make room for those conversations in order for your, to have a healthy sex life. Your sex life is only as good as you can communicate. I'm in control of these questions now, you ready? Did Cam's elevation to assistant pastor add 
or change the pressure on either one of you. I definitely have a million times more pressure. Yes. And, and there's that. And I, no, no, but I want to say something. Go ahead. I do feel like because of your elevation, I've had to step up as a wife in order to be there for you more. You vent to me more now. Um, like you give me more of yourself emotionally, which I'm not, a, I'm not, it's not a bad thing at all. It's not like you're putting pressure on me, but it helps me to know how to be there for you. So I try to step up in ways that I can help out more with you, which is why I feel like I've been taking more time away from social media, more time away from YouTube and all that to be there more to support you in what you're doing in your transition in life. I feel more pressure from social media. I'll say that people want me to preach now and stuff. And I'm like, that's not me y'all. That's him. Like, I'm not finna be on here talking about the Bible every day. Like, I'm still gonna be me. Cause I bring me. <laughs> Give an example of when you had to encourage one another in 2020. We have to encourage each other all the time. All the time, but yeah, specifically your transition um, and, and, to, and doing more in ministry and stuff, I have to encourage you in that area. You've also encouraged me as far as like the personal things that I wanna do. You really encouraged me big time in relation to my music. Yes, we have friends and stuff that do music and I'd be like, no, go to his house. Go like, even with the song, with the Life with the Logan song. The new Life with the Logan that song. That was my idea. Check that out. It was my idea to do that song. I thought our previous song Cam was, liked the previous I song, but I was fired. like, no, I, I, wanted, I want Cam. Great job. Because I knew that if he did this song with LaShawn, it would encourage you to work on more music. So I was like, I want him to do a song and with And that's LaShawn. what he did. I literally hit up LaShawn. I was like, what can I do to get you and Cam to do a song together? Like, I, I wanted that for you. Music is coming this year, guys. I feel like I say that every year, but... This is a good one. How did the uncertainty of 2020 impact your mindset about finances as a couple? Yeah. Well, yeah. what Vicky does with her job as a social media influencer, as she's been working with her team, her revenue and her business has increased substantially each year. Yes, but also and my responsibilities financially have increased as well because I'm running a business and I have to pay people to do things. That's that true. made it harder on me because even though I was making a lot more money last year, I still had to pay the people that were helping me to make the money. Having a business was costing me more than it used to. And so because of like the inconsistency with the pandemic and everything like that too, it was like kind of like, okay, we need to be more organized about our finances as we are developing this business together and want to you know do more with it it's like okay we need to really like sit down and hash out how we're going to do this make a plan what are we going to do going forward so we had to do that as well as you know talking with our manager on ways that i can increase mm -hmm. my revenue and my social media presence to generate more revenue as well doing things that i love to do so mm -hmm. um yeah we, we talked about that and then you know moves and stuff that I want to make uh, personally and, and transition out of certain areas of, of life and transition into other areas of life. But it's like, you know, I talk <laughs> about it all the time. You know, you got to make those faith moves, but you be scared yep. because you're getting something consistently. Yep. And you're like, I don't want to lose the consistency of this thing, even though I know I Can need to step Can you not say into, what it is? I just don't want to because <laughs> you never know who's watching. Oh, they um, don't watch. When the day comes, you'll know. How did date night change? Well, date night changed from a lot of nights out on the town and driving to the city and to at the beginning of the pandemic, we had a lot of car dates. Uh, we were we were our own DoorDash and we would go pick up the food Eat and sit in, in the car, car and, and watch, you know, Netflix series in the car. Shout out to Tesla for, you know, having the TV and the whip. We, we're not really dressing up. We just yeah hey let's go pick up something to eat and and, and make it happen the summer was fun because i got to let my top down and stuff this was after you destroyed your top right no it was before don't remind me don't remind me then we started in the summertime stuff started opening up stuff started outside. opening up and then we also like we we went on trips we did go on trips we were not afraid to travel during we went the on day. trips some people may feel a way about that and that's totally fine but i that's, feel like it's as that's Auntie Tab say, that's your business. That's that's our business. This, we this felt comfortable business. enough to travel. And the places we did travel, we felt extremely comfortable. We did not feel like we were unsafe. We came back in one piece. We were fine. I didn't even get Cam sick. Cam didn't get last sick year, all year. Period. Like oh, we not even, even talked a, about your health stuff. Not even a, not even the cold. We didn't even talk about your health stuff. So yeah. Cam um, went to the doctor. You saw the doctor in Atlanta. I you did. know? I did. Learn so, some yeah. stuff about your body. Getting this body, getting this body in order, man. When you're 30, I try to tell y'all, when you turn 30, stuff change. Favorite date night of the year? 
Don't think, just go. Don't it think too hard. Have to be Cabo with Wanda and Lo. I feel like anytime we say what's your favorite date, it's always somewhere out of the country. <laughs> If you are not traveling with your spouse, you are missing out on a whole educational experience because traveling is the best. Wait, was that last year or am I, when we went to Tao with Taylor and Lando? That was last year too. Cause that's, that's. That was fun. All of our double date nights. All of our friends. double date nights. Honestly, our double dates are the best. But other than Cabo, I don't remember exactly why this is my favorite, but the one that stands out the most to me is when we went to dinner, we went to Momotaro. And I had on that little dress in the summertime. I wore them shoes that hurt my feet real bad. Momotaro, downtown. The place that's across the place from the place where I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. For for brunch. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wear something cute. Oh, that was fun too. That was fun dates. See, there was just. There's so many good ones. We had some really good summer dates. Our summer yeah. dates were summertime shy, man. Summertime shy, man. It's top two and it's not two. Top two and not two, man. We had some good times. Even in the pandemic, summertime yeah. shy was still lit. Most memorable moment most, of the year. Yeah, most memorable mo mo I can't talk. My most memorable moment was your birthday. When you watched the video of all the people saying happy birthday to you. That yeah, was that, a great yeah, moment that, that for was me. Shy. I was so that, happy. I was like, I, I was, was so happy. flabbergasted at how you got that done. I did. I did that all while you were gone. Yeah. I hit up like 50 people and told them to wish them happy birthday and they all sent in videos. It was a touching moment. I that really wanted you to cry. That was a wonderful. It was so great. I made a thank you to the thank yous. Yes, that was great. <laughs> that and when we surprised my mom. That was another memorable moment. Was that last year? Mm -hmm. That was last the year. The first time I ever seen my mom. For Mother's Day. The first time I seen my mom on Mother's Day since we've been married. Most difficult moment of the year. Obviously, for me, it's going to be the funeral. funeral for the young man. That was probably the most difficult for me too. Something you admire about one another and something you can't stand. I knew this one would be interesting. I'll let you go first. Um, something I admire about you. Cam is has such a big heart for people. I mean, he should because he's a pastor, but he has such a, a heart for people and he's such a relationship guy. There were a couple of times last year where he was very disappointed. He doesn't like to see people in a bad position or doesn't like to see people not living the best life that they can. And he more so feels really sad and upset. It's just a testament to like how big his heart really is because like he really cares about people, especially with the with the funeral that happened and like just the, a number of things that happened that really showed me how much you truly care about people. That really like touches me every time. Like you really care, like you genuinely care. To me, that is like something I really admire about you. Um, and then something that I can't stand about you. It's not really something I can't stand, it just frustrates me. Like you don't, you're considerate about everything but your phone. Like if we're in the car and we're talking, we said this to you the other day with mom and Lexus. If we're in the car, we're all talking or something, Cam be on his phone, he'll be listening to people talk, he'll be watching loud videos and stuff. And I'm like, dude, like we're all having a conversation. Can you engage in the conversation? Also, <laughs> that, that's valid. Cause that's something that you can't yes. take. I can't take that from you. Because that's how you feel. That's how I feel. That's how you feel. Loud is in the eye or the ear of the beholder. Okay, if y'all are out Stuff of public. Stuff to her that's loud is not loud. We all agreed that you being on your phone is loud. Like if we watching something on TV, like me and Lexus and Cam, we all sit on the couch watching a movie. Stuff He'd to be her on his phone loud. playing loud video, somebody I talking loud. To, uh, I listened to a voice note from one of my friends and they're like, that's Can so you not loud. That? And it wasn't. Can you not? But we're watching. If we're it watching, wasn't. engaging, having a conversation. That's not even. Y'all wasn't watching nothing when I listened to a voice note. We were in the car. Y'all was talking about something. Oh my god. Y'all talking about something that had nothing to do with me. I don't care what y'all talking about because y'all ain't talking to me. But we could still so hear it. So I'm listening it. to something, and I listened to it for literally 30 seconds. That they was acting like I was listening to it over and over and over and over again. <laughs> They're just like it's so loud. You know, you're not considering it. Blah blah blah. I don't care what y'all talking about. You have headphones. That's what headphones are for. I don't mind you watching. They're listening. Just have headphones. And then I put my headphones in, and y'all was still mad because I wasn't paying attention to y'all. Maybe we wanted to talk to you. We missed you so, in that moment. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just be clear. Gotta set the tone. I mean, to if I had to, known. that's not a Gotta big thing. Gotta set the tone to make it known. Be clear. Uh, be clear. Yeah. Be, that's finna, I'm finna get to the studio, right? Oh, my goodness. My new song. Hit single coming out called Be Clear. You still gonna make me smile and laugh no matter what. So I can't even really be mad. It's just one thing that got me. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I admire. I admire. I think they're hard. <laughs> Well, like, there's so many I can choose from because you're just so wonderful. Oh, thanks. One thing that I, I, I admire, I don't know, this may be kind of selfish, but I admire that you've truly 
learned how to develop genuine friendships and like to see you talking to your homies and your friends and your girlfriends like on a consistent basis y'all in group chats and what like that that genuinely makes me happy oh you are doing something in your business like in it's our business but but the ability that you have to run your business as pretty much like you know uh, a one-man band the majority of he liked that i'm an independent your woman. career <laughs> the majority of your career you've had to sh kind of shoot stuff on your own set up the lights come up with the concepts come up with the ideas and now you know since last year like i've been helping a lot more with that it's just like man like this is a rip like for people that would used to troll and stuff and be like that ain't no real job y'all don't know you have a lot no that goes idea. into this yeah the yeah like you're literally you're you're a content creator and people don't understand like when people are shooting movies they're creating content advertising uh words and copy and write scripts and i mean it's a lot that goes into it so i i definitely admire that because some people they don't they just think you take pictures and look cute and like there's so much that goes into that something that i can't stand is that you you will never know what you want to eat and that's just the easiest one to pick because you just literally will never know i know it's a battle that that i'll continue to fight the rest <laughs> of my life but she will never know what she wants to eat like i i really want you to start considering right now before we finish these last several questions what you want to eat i'm just let you know right now i don't know house update plus what's the biggest challenge in buying in the home buying process if you follow life through logan's you knew that we were um looking for a home in the process of possibly building and um we kind of started the process and then we put it on hold and i made the last vlog video that i made about the house buying process is still up so you can go watch it get all the information you need that's the only information we have at this point um so i don't have any new house updates and if i did have any you would know that is the update <laughs> there are none um and then uh the biggest challenge for the house buying process um right now the challenge is making sure that we're ready for this process yeah because it's, it's bigger than just buying a house. a new house yeah it's not just like it's not just like oh i have the money to get a house so i'm just gonna get a house no there has to be a lot not, of other things in all. line yep and um because we have a business there are other things that go into like my income and like yep. if you have a regular job like a like you work for someone else it's easier to yep. go through that process because then all of your stuff is like organizing you know what i mean like it, i'm doing this all myself i'm my, i'm running my own corporation here yeah. so there's a lot of stuff that goes into that and I'm, we're trying to get all that figured out now so after tax season i'll have something for y'all <laughs> i'll know what's going on but that's been the most difficult part you mentioned you feel more in sync what helps you get to that point in 2020 communication, communication. blessings you owe me a soda <laughs> people, a lot. people make it seem like communication is such a hard thing but really like you can communicate with each other on your drive to the grocery store on date night on your way to church Constant. like hey this is this is on my heart like or just been on my mind like and just talk yes and just you express how you feel in a in a considerate way like if you if you're frustrated about something don't wait till you're like till you can't hold it anymore like say it and don't let that stuff sit and marinate in your spirit don't let that thing sizzle in your spirit it ain't good to hold farts in mm -mm. all that let stuff it out. let it out and I feel like if you yeah. really, if you love the person you with, you wouldn't hold information from them. Like you talk to them, even if it's hard, like you got to find ways to talk to people. Like you got to find ways to communicate. We talked about that in our communication podcast. Go watch that. Was your vision for seven, year seven achieved? As far as like the stuff that we wrote down, I was going through my notes and I saw like some of the goals that we had. So. In my, in my personal job, in my job, at the beginning of every fiscal year, after we have our performance appraisals, we set goals. Every quarter we have to go in and we have to let the the system that we use know that goal is in progress. Even if you don't accomplish a goal, if you let the system know that the goal is in progress, it still counts as you starting, making an effort toward that goal. This is getting good to me. <laughs> so just because we didn't already accomplish the goal, that does not mean that we failed. Starting is better than not starting. True. What is your vision for year eight and goals, things you want to improve in, in your marriage? Um, This year we're doing, that's the goal. Do more, talk about it less, just do it. Oh, it sounds like, like you weren't done. Uh, I, I mean. This year we're doing. We're doing. 
because I feel like in the past couple of years we've said all these things we wanted to do and never did them. So now no, that's big facts. We we on that Nike vibe. We about to just do. We're gonna just do a vibe right now. Um, I didn't really write down a lot of goals this year. I didn't really like plan them all out. I was just like, these are the things we want to accomplish. Let's get it done. We said we wanted to do a podcast. Top of the year, we were like, all right, boom, boom, boom. Let's just make it happen. Let's let's set up this room. We switch the stuff around. Let's buy some mics. Let's buy some podcast equipment. Let's put this wall up. Like we just start doing stuff. We didn't really think too hard about it. We were just proactive. Um, I feel like that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the year. Like, I'm tired of putting pressure on myself to do things if it's not the right time or the right season to do them in. I may want to achieve something or do something, but it might not be the right time. So my, my thing is I'm just going to do whatever the Lord leads me to do. I'm calling it my rainbow year because I believe that God is going to fulfill promises. Mm -hmm. Come on. I also believe that this is my boldest year mm. as a person. Yeah. Um, this le this year requires another level of boldness and transparency mm. for the both of us. We both felt that. And so rainbows are very bold. They're very my, bright. My, my. I remember as a kid, people used to make fun of me for wearing rainbows and bright colors. So um, I'm taking that and I'm saying that's me being bold and me standing in who I am and not allowing people to make me black and white um you know come on Wanda Vision. i'm gonna be in color technicolor in living, living color because you can do what you want to do in living in color living it's interesting how the absence of color makes things seem dead but the presence of colors mm -hmm. when god said let there be light and there was y'all ever seen the movies where Ooh. like where like somebody is like doing something and it's in black and white and then like it's like a pivotal moment happens and everything turns to color that's what's happened in my life. I love it. I stand in agreement. I'm believing God for some for some crazy things. Mm -hmm. Preach on this. And my prayers have changed. I'm not afraid to get on God's nerves. I'm not afraid to beg God for stuff that I really, really want that I know lines up with his will for my life. And I'm not afraid to actively work towards things instead of saying I have faith, but not working mm. the faith there it is oh my god there it is you can't say that you want to start a business and just miraculously believe that god is going to put a business in your lap if you not already have something in the works so yeah that's 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 what i'm doing this year and i truly believe that god is going to fulfill every promise for our lives and and for us as a team for the everything is we logan household mm -hmm. yep and we pray that god will do the same in your life so yes we thank you for tuning in to this episode of everything is we life with the logan's vicky logan channel <laughs> we pray that you know this marriage q a blessed you, you be sure know, to follow man. the podcast because we're probably going to answer more questions that you may have had that we didn't answer on there it's lit it's lit we'll talk to you guys somewhere else <laughs> thanks for watching guys bye <laughs>